Now I should remind you that Richard Dawkins is one of the world's premier proponents of atheism. This guy has a chair at Oxford University. Have a listen. Of course, common sense doesn't allow you to get something from nothing. Something pretty mysterious had to give rise to the origin of the universe. And, and can I just interrupt? It's an old question, a very old question. Thomas Aquinas in the 13th century was asking the same question. He said there must have been a time when no physical things existed but something can't come from nothing. That was his view. It's just well, been repeated by us. Something era. can come from nothing, and that's what physicists are now, are now telling us. Physicists like Lawrence Krauss. And made it plausible, the most remarkable and unexpected thing you can imagine, that you could start with absolutely nothing. That means, unlike the Cardinal said, and unlike some people argue, no particles but not even empty space, no space whatsoever, and maybe even no laws governing that space. And we can plausibly understand how you could arrive without any miracles, without any need for a creator, without any supernatural creation, you could produce everything we see. And I find that the fact that it's plausible, <coughs> remarkable. And these are the guys that scoff at the idea of someone taking water and changing it into wine. That is, taking something that exists and turning it into something else that exists. And yet, they think it's more plausible that you could take absolutely nothing, no particles, no space, no nothing, and have it magically turn into our immense universe without any causing agent. And they think that is more plausible? Go figure. It's okay, a matter, you can quickly respond to you that. Can, you can question. dispute exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing, but whatever yeah. it is, it's very, very simple. Yeah. And <laughs> why is that funny? <laughs> It's okay, a matter, you can, quickly respond to you that can, you can dispute exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing, but whatever yeah. it is, it's very, very simple. Yeah. And <laughs> why is that funny? <laughs> It's a bit funny to be trying to define nothing. <laughs> Richard Dawkins has a habit of uh, making outrageous statements. Uh, here's one of them. Life is now completely solved, barring the details. That was Darwin's contribution. And to say that the questions on the origin of life have been solved by Darwin is a joke. In 2005, at the famous Kitzmiller trial, one of the leading proponents of evolution in the world today, Kenneth Miller, testified. And in his testimony, he admitted that since Darwin, over 150 years ago, presented his theory, science still cannot even tell us how the living cell evolved. So for Dawkins, to claim that Darwin solved anything is just one of the many unsubstantiated claims that Dawkins promotes on a regular basis. If you listen to the audience, you heard them chuckle when he said, barring the details.
well explaining the details of the step-by-step -step process of natural selection acting upon favorable mutations is the major stumbling block for the proponents of evolution because they do not know how the alleged transitions took place you can search high and low throughout the peer-reviewed science journals and you will not find a single step-by-step -step description of the development of any organ of any air-breathing animal in the world. All you will get is an unsubstantiated hypothesis of what they think might have happened, what Harvard University's professor Richard Lewinton called an unsubstantiated just-so story. And that is what the theory of evolution is all about. It's all about propagating the myth that says we know a lot about how life evolved when in fact we haven't been able to figure out how the simplest living cell evolved. The devil is in the details and it is the details that the Darwinists avoid like the plague. Now, as for getting your morals from the Bible, I very sincerely hope nobody does get their morals from the Bible. Oh my, why would anyone want to get their morals from the Bible? A book that tells us we should love our neighbors, love our wives and husbands, be respectful to our parents, a book that teaches us we shouldn't lie, steal, bear false witness, a book that tells us we should feed the hungry, give to charity, heal the sick. Man, what a terrible set of ideas to follow. Apparently, Richard Dawkins prefers that we have his view of morality, like this. My passion is for scientific truth. I don't much care about what's good and evil, actually. Could you imagine what the world would be like if we all shared that attitude? What scientists are trying to do is to explain how you can get not just something, but the immense complexity of the, of the world, of the universe, and... The immense complexity of the universe? But Richard, in another video you told us this. A god is a complicated entity which requires a much more sophisticated and difficult explanation than a universe, which is, according to modern physics, a very simple entity. Well, which one is it, Richard? Is it simple or is it immensely complex? Make up your mind. And this is one of the most prominent atheists in the world today. I want to see if I can design an eye using those principles from scratch, a bare patch of skin. From scratch? To claim you are starting from scratch using a light sensitive patch of skin is like saying I'm going to build this computer from scratch but the motherboard, the processor chip, the memory chips, the hard drive and the power supply are already in place and I'll show you how I'm going to build the outer case which is merely a shell. Because that light sensitive patch of skin is thousands of times more complex than all of those computer parts combined. Dawkins himself once pointed out the following, and I quote, There is enough information capacity in a single human cell to store the Encyclopedia Britannica, all 30 volumes of it, three or four times over, unquote. So instead of starting out from scratch, as Dawkins contends, he is starting out with something that is immensely complex to begin with, without even bothering to explain how that complexity came into being in the first place. How convenient for him. Skin cells like these often have a little light-sensitive pigment to start with. So something interesting can happen. Of course, these cells couldn't possibly tell an animal where the light was coming from. All light would illuminate them equally, so they'd just be on or off. But let's drop our cells slightly into a shallow pit. Things begin to get better. Now our hypothetical animal could steer by light, 
If the angles are wide enough apart, different patches of cells will be exposed to light from different angles. The animal can now steer by light? Uh, no, that is totally absurd. Nowhere in his video so far did Dawkins show the development of the retina nor the optic nerve, both of which are necessary to be present for the process of converting of retinal to 11 CIS retinal, which is crucial for vision to occur. In fact, not only will you not see Dawkins make any kind of attempt to describe how that complex process allegedly evolved in the rest of his video, it is a fact that you cannot find any technical science literature that will describe in detail how that process allegedly evolved. It's all just a bunch of storytelling. Concluding with Dawkins, I'd like to share a true story that was shared by Ravi Zacharias concerning Richard Dawkins. I want to tell you something fascinating that happened, and this is a true story. It happened a few months ago. He was on a radio program on the BBC live, and uh, he was uh, dialoguing with the, one of the uh, ministers of St. Paul's Cathedral. And he was, as usual, but Dawkins just very belligerent and hostile and uh, verbose and all that he does to criticize believers. And he said, you know, Christians are basically very unintelligent people. He said, if you want to ask an average Christian even to name the Gospels, they won't know it. They don't know it. And so the vicar just kept listening and he said, Richard, you're a very erudite scientist. And Richard's just nodding, you know. He said, your favorite book is The Origin of Species, right, by Darwin? He said, right. He said, Richard, can you name the full title of the book? <laughs> this happened live. And Dawkins said, oh, yeah, yeah, I know, it's, I know it's, it's, it's a much longer title than The Origin of Species. So the vicar said, go ahead, go ahead. Name it for me. On the origin of species, uh, with, uh, God, uh, on the origin of species, um, there, there is a subtitle. The, uh, The ultimate proof of the sovereignty and omnipotence of God <laughs> is that it even takes an atheist who doesn't believe in him to call upon him to remind him of the title of the book that helped him deny him. Yeah.